This video will discuss spiral galaxies, both in the grand spiral type and barred type. Talk about their characteristics, show Hubble images, and uh, talk about supermassive black holes in the middle, dark matter, uh, but uh, mostly images is what we'll be uh, taking advantage of in viewing this, this PowerPoint. So we have in the 1920s Hubble coming up with a classification of photographs that were being taken, not as a uh, transition or change of one form to another necessarily, but uh, ellipticals, regular spirals, and the barred spirals um, were the three big categories. There are regular galaxies also, and some other smaller designations that I'm not going to go into, spiral galaxies for, for this video. So about to show a, a slide here with uh, in the early universe, all the types of galaxies were present. However, the barred spirals were less common in the early universe than they are today. And also the ellipticals were less common. Um, Andromeda galaxy near the Milky Way, larger than the Milky Way, um, but it is a spiral type of galaxy. The spirals have an abundance of, they have noticeable dust in the uh, arms of the spiral galaxy. Uh, the satellite galaxy of uh, Andromeda, there's some globular clusters in here. I'm not going to talk about the globular clusters or, or satellite galaxies. A little diagram here of uh, the Milky Way galaxy, and we could apply this in general to spiral type galaxies. There's a thin disk where gas and dust is located where stars are being formed. There are globular clusters in a halo around, along with other halo stars, uh, not in clusters. We have a central bulge uh, that has a mixture of new and old stars. In general, halo stars are old, disk stars are new. And we have the center of the galaxy where a supermassive black hole would be located. But that uh, sort of a schematic sketch of spiral galaxies. Oh, here we go with the uh, Whirlpool Galaxy, M51, and there is a nearby galaxy here that's distorting the spiral arms a little bit, but um, we see these spiral structures, the reddish light from uh, hydrogen that's been energized by hot stars in the hydrogen cloud. Um, very, very lovely. If we view this galaxy with visible light on the left, infrared light, on the right side, the infrared light shows us more clearly where dust is located. And there is a extra concentration, a higher density of dust in the spiral arms along with higher density of gas. That's where the stars are being formed, the new stars that are hot and bright. M81, uh, about 12 million light years from the Milky Way. Again, uh, nice uh, spiral arm structure. In the infrared, again, picking up where the dust is located in M51, I'm sorry, M81. The M101, the pinwheel galaxy, where the spiral arms are a little bit more spread out and uh, it's larger diameter than the Milky Way galaxy. NGC 3982, another example of a spiral smaller than the Milky Way. M74, again, a little bit smaller than the Milky Way galaxy. We get this nice spiral structure. And um, for most of the spiral galaxies, the galaxy is spinning uh, in the direction I'm moving the mouse pointer here. And these spiral arms lag behind. The rotation of the galaxy is not the prime um, motivation or creator of the spiral arms, however. We'll get to that later. If the galaxy is not facing us, just randomly it's tilted away, mostly away in this uh, uh, photo, but we have again dust embedded in here, which uh, gives us an indication in red blotches where new stars are being formed in the H2 regions, ionized hydrogen regions. Here's a spiral galaxy that's edge on. This one's tilted again. But you can pick up the dust, and with infrared wavelengths, again, 
showing us where the dust is located in a nice thin disk. The Sombrero Galaxy M104 that some believe is kind of a mixture of a spiral galaxy. You can see the dust here, but this large halo is a little bit unusual. Um, some people have been speculated that it's a collision in process, but uh, I think it just has a big halo. <laughs> and uh, uh, Nice photo anyway. Edge on spiral galaxy with an extended halo. Now the other type of uh, the spiral type galaxies are where we have some type of rod or rectangular structure going through the core. This is not a drawing. This is a photograph of NGC 1015. But the barred spiral, where the spiral arms don't go down to the uh, nucleus of the galaxy. They are associated with kind of the ends of the bar. We'll see that uh, better in this uh, photograph of NGC 1300. But the bar across here and the spiral arms extending out from that bar. And there's some indication that uh, in the barred spirals there's gas flowing in towards the nucleus, in towards the core of the galaxy. Another example, NGC 1672. Still we see that there are new stars being formed. You see these H2 regions that kind of trace out the, uh, the spiral arm. The spiral arms where we have a little higher density of gas and dust and new stars being formed. NGC 5236 M83 in the Messier catalog. And a little closer view with the Hubble telescope of star formation in the M83 galaxy. Uh, again, in these spiral arms where the density of gas and dust goes up, of this cold gas and dust, we can have a gravitational collapse and uh, star forming. And then those new stars, some of them are very hot and a lot of ultraviolet light to energize the uh, hydrogen clouds here and give off this characteristic red light uh, in the visible spectrum. NGC. 1365, again the bar going here and the spiral arms coming off the ends of the bar. Another example, UGC 9391. And here's a kind of a different type of barred spiral. Um, this is a Hubble photograph. It has kind of the characteristic kind of notch here. It's not a mistake. It's uh, the way the camera was designed to give high resolution in a certain portion of the image. But uh, near the nucleus there is a ring where there's an enhanced uh, star formation cycle going on now, so a star burst called, where there's extra high rate of stars being formed. The bar going across here and then there's an outer ring of stars, but still um, in the description here at the hubblesite.org website, it was described as a barred spiral. And more distant barred spirals, you can see the bar coming across. So what are the characteristics? Well, there is a rotating disk, rotating disk, and this distinguishes them from the elliptical galaxies where there's no flattened disk. Um, in the spiral galaxies, most of the matter giving off light is in the disk. We have the matter, gas, dust, and the young stars going around in pretty much circular orbits around the nucleus of the galaxy. And the spiral arms are trailing the rotation in most cases. There are some exceptions to this where the uh, end of the spiral points in the direction of the rotation of the galaxy. That's not usually the case. Most times the outer portion of the spiral arm is lagging behind, it's trailing the rotation of the galaxy. One thing that is uh, very interesting when the Doppler method is used to measure the speeds of the material as a function of distance away from the center of the galaxy, the speeds do not fall off the way they do in the solar system. In the solar system Mercury is fast and the outer planets are slower. Um, that's not the way it is in the galaxies and Measurements show as the uh, 
material is measured at greater distances away from the center, the speed is kind of uniform or even increases. So we'll take a look at some data for this, or M33, and taking a look at the gas associated with this galaxy, the 21 centimeter line of hydrogen is detecting gas associated with this galaxy. Um, if gravity was only due to the disk, what we see here for stars and uh, the hot gas and, and dust, if that was the only gravity causing the effect of orbital motion, the speed should decrease as we move away from the center of the galaxy. However, this is the data for all galaxies. It's uh, staying up or level, and that's a, a clue to astronomers that there's an extra source of gravity extending way out away from the nucleus of this galaxy and it's come to be known as dark matter. It does not give off light. It does have a gravitational effect. So dark matter causing a higher speed in the outer regions of galaxies than what we uh, thought would be there. What about uh, some other characteristics regarding the disk? The gas and dust is in the disk. Not much gas and dust in the halo of the spiral galaxies. And it's especially dense at the spiral arms. Um, that's the place where, due to this extra density, new stars are formed, and those new stars, some of them are very hot and bright, and they help illuminate the position of the spiral arms. They trace out the spiral arms. The material in between the spiral arms is not void. There is material there, and there are stars there. but. Uh, there are more stars, new stars, in the spiral arms because that's where the raw material for star formation is, the gas and dust that's been kind of compressed uh, to higher density at that spiral arm. So there are different types of spiral galaxies. The SA have very small spiral arms. The SC have very extended spiral arms. Um, and this website I found uh, indicated that uh, up to 15% of the visible material in the spiral arms is, is dust. Another thing about the spiral galaxy, new stars are in the thin disk of the galaxy. The older stars are in a spherical or elliptical distribution around the center of the galaxy, but they're, the old stars are not confined to the thin disk. The new stars are confined to the thin disk of the galaxy. How did the spiral galaxies form? The leading uh, theory would be that there's an extremely large cloud that has a little bit of rotation. And as the uh, <coughs> material is under the control of gravity dense enough to, to collapse, this gas and dust forms a disk. The gas and dust particles can interact with each other and as they're orbiting the center, some are moving down through kind of the equator of the motion while others are moving up. They interact with each other, hit each other, and cease their up and down type motion, settle into a disk. This disk spins as the gas cloud collapses. It has to conserve angular momentum. As you've seen an ice skater pull his or her arms towards the center of the body, the spin goes faster for that person, or a gymnast or a diver uh, pulls their body closer together, they spin faster. And that's what's happening here. As the uh, large cloud that had a little bit of rotation in it, as it uh, shrinks down, it spins faster and faster. And we have the case of the gas and dust forming a disk before we get very many stars being formed, before they form. In the elliptical galaxies, the gas and dust collapses into stars without forming a disk. There's, there isn't much rotation for the elliptical galaxies. And because we have most of the mass in the disk, there's not much uh, gas and dust left to form stars in the halo. You could do a search on YouTube for simulations of spiral galaxies, and you'll see um, some proposals that uh, off-center collisions of small galaxies build up a spiral. Uh, I have a little trouble with this because uh, it's, 
it's believed that collisions in centers of galaxy clusters cause spiral galaxies to lose their form and become elliptical galaxies. Um, how is it that these collisions don't create elliptical galaxies but instead form a spiral? So I'm not quite, uh, I'm not a galaxy expert, but uh, I prefer method one for the explanation of how the uh, spiral galaxies form. What about the barred spirals? It surveys of galaxies at different distances away from us, so looking back in time, show that the uh, percentage of barred spirals decreases as you go further back. So in the early universe, there weren't as many barred spirals. There are more that are close to us and close to us in time. So perhaps the regular spirals uh, change into barred spirals uh, for some reason. I don't know what that reason is. Uh, but the uh, speculation is that the orbits of the stars stop being so circular and become more elliptical and the matter kind of piles up into the bar. Uh, so you can look at this website, the Hubble uh, site.org news underscore release news 2008 I'm not sure that's the correct uh, dash 29. It might be the 29th news release of 2008. I hope I have that website in there correctly. But uh, formation of the spiral arms themselves, a couple of uh, theories here. Again, I kind of lean towards number one. <coughs> but we have uh, um, higher gas and dust density. That's certainly true in the spiral arm that is self-sustaining. Um, so we have the stars, the gas, and the dust orbiting the galaxy. Uh, the stars are not affected too much by the spiral arms. There's some gravitational effect of holding them uh, back just a little bit, but no collisions that would be a problem. But the gas and dust, there are collisions there. And the gas and dust can kind of that's orbiting the center of the galaxy can kind of pile into an existing spiral arm and maintain a high density of gas and dust there. Uh, perhaps you've driven on the interstate when there's a uh, police car that's pulled somebody over for some reason and the traffic will slow down at the region of where the police car is uh, properly as it should uh, but that would be kind of the spiral arm position and then the cars keep moving on through uh, but there's a higher density of cars near that uh, that traffic stop um, so that's the density wave theory How's the density wave get started? Not so certain on that. Some think that uh, bars in spiral galaxy help that, or a neighboring nearby galaxy gets a density wave started, but there are certainly spiral galaxies that don't have bars and don't have companion type galaxies. Another theory would be that in the center of the galaxy where the rate of star formation is higher, there are supernovas that occur. And a supernova, as a shell of expanding material encounters the interstellar medium, it will compress gas and dust and cause more stars to form. And then some of those become supernova and they blow out their uh, outer layers and compress gas and dust further away from the center of the galaxy. And perhaps that uh, triggers this uh, compression, this high density situation. And then the spin of the galaxy can kind of stretch out that uh, compression itself. Uh, a little bit of hand, I'm waving my hands here as I'm talking about the video. Uh, sort of prefer number one here, the density wave uh, model instead of the supernova. Uh, why would the supernovas just give us two arms or four arms in a galaxy? That remains to be researched. Just a brief word about black holes in, center, in the centers of spiral galaxies and they're in other galaxies as well. But um, for the galaxies that are closer to us, um, astronomers can detect the motion of the material, how fast it's moving and how far away it is from the center. And the only explanation for the high speeds uh, are the only explanation is that there's a supermassive black hole. We're talking millions, hundreds of millions of solar masses in a black hole at the centers of uh, many galaxies. And that provides enough gravitational force to have material near the center move very fast. 
So that's pretty much confirmed that uh, at least you know, 10 to 20 have been measured galaxies where this motion uh, shows that there are supermassive black holes. Other galaxies, it's kind of inferred from the brightness of the core of the galaxy, uh, the velocity dispersion as we look at sort of the blur of light. Uh, astronomers can determine sort of the spread of velocities, not for individual objects, but um, there's good indication that there are supermassive black holes in all the galaxies. And there's some websites listed here that uh, if you pause the video and write those down, you could uh, read about that for yourself. So I hope uh, you've learned a little bit about spiral galaxies, thin disk, new stars, gas and dust, high density of gas and dust in the spiral arms leading to those new star formations where uh, we can see those older stars in the halo. Um, interesting spiral arms, very beautiful to look at. And uh, if you want to see more of my physics and astronomy videos, uh, they're listed at these websites. It's free. You don't give your email address or anything. You just uh, use the resource. So you'll find names of videos, how long they are, and a description of the content. And if you enjoy those, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel.